all these guys six inches long. And all that magnesium dust will burn. There's a steel core in the center of these rods, so if you want to screw in there for a terminal, you got to drill off to the side. And I'm just tapping some threads in here. I'll stick a stainless steel screw in there for the negative terminal. This stuff is pretty easy to machine. Then I'm just going to sand off some of this oxide layer. Last month, a couple of people messaged me wanting some more information about magnesium crystal cell earth batteries. In my opinion, if you want to make magnesium cells, I think you'd be ahead to make them in containers and not stick them in the ground. With my magnesium earth batteries, I was just mostly getting moisture from the ground that contributed to the action of it. And then I would have that problem of the electrolyte diluting whenever, whenever it rained. Just in my, in my sandy soil here, just the electrolyte just wouldn't maintain a level. And then there's other problems of it freezing up in the winter. It's got to have to be below four feet here. And then I'd get corroded and failing connections. So what I'm going to do in this video, I'm going to make a magnesium crystal cell battery in a jar. The container that I'm going to use for the battery is going to be a one quart wide mouth canning jar. And I'm going to use a plastic reusable lid that will fit in that jar. And for the magnesium, I'm going to keep using these anode rods that you get for water heaters. This is a magnesium anode rod. You can get a lot of magnesium for a pretty decent price. This is about $24 now, and it's over 44 inches long. And you get good voltages with this stuff. And for the positive terminal, I'm going to use this carbon fiber graphite rope. I'm going to unravel it. It's made with three strands, but I'm going to unravel this because this battery is going to be made with three cells and I'll have three parts. It doesn't need to be that thick, so I'm going to unravel it and I'll have three strands for three different cells. And for the electrolyte, I'm just going to use the alum. I'll mix it with some water and I'll soak the cells in that and that's going to be the electrolyte. next part of the electrode preparation is I wanted some stops on the magnesium to keep it from moving in and out. So I super glued o-ring on here and once I get these electrodes or cells put together I'll just slide that through and put another o-ring there to stop it. Now I need a, a membrane between the magnesium and carbon fiber rope and I'm using some paper towel. This is a shop towel, paper towel. It's a little bit thicker than household stuff and I'm cutting these five and a half inches. The electrodes are six. I'm cutting these five and a half and then I'm just kind of gluing these around the magnesium. I'm just using some of this glue right here. And uh, I think it helps to kind of roll these up a little bit tighter before I glue them on. I'm going to do it like this so you can see a little better. And I'll just wrap it around there, fold it, and glue it together and I'll 
Questo mi dura ogni... And then I'll let that dry. And come out like this, and that's when I'll wind the rope around there. Except I'll start on this end over here. I gotta unravel this. Now, to me, handling this carbon fiber graphite rope is like handling fiberglass insulation. Little hairs fly off of it. So, I'm gonna be wearing a mask because I don't wanna be breathing that stuff in. And on the ends here, I just hot glued the ends so they don't all fly apart. Now the plan is to take this carbon fiber graphite rope and wrap a layer around the magnesium the membrane right on top of the membrane. So I'm going to leave it start like this and start wrapping it right here. And I'm going to wrap this as tight as I can get it. Stuff is kind of flattening out, so. And I'll continue with that. I left this long here so I can tie it off. There we go. So that's one. And that's three. Next thing I want to do is I want to test these cells. So I want to soak them in the alum water. This is all saturated with alum. There's even some sitting on the bottom, so it's good and saturated. And I'll just dunk the one end in there. I don't want to dunk that end in there because I don't want the end corroded. So I'm just going to let it soak in this way. And let me test it right away. You can see how to put it over here, maybe. I should have stuck a screw in there, but let me see. Fifteen, it's growing in voltage. Rising in voltage, I should say. Let it set a little bit while I dunk another one. And it usually takes a while for these to form a good battery connection. I'm going to go ahead and test the current on each one. Get it right here. It'll go up over 100 milliamps. That one's over. Yes, they climb. This one's keep climbing and climbing. 150 milliamps climbing. It's this one over here. Oops. The other one's climbing too. The other one climbed a lot faster. This is just being shorted out through the meter. And this one is a little bit slower than the other one, but it's going up. This is the first one that I did. So it might be a little bit drier, this one. I think this one might be a little drier. I'll test the voltage. 
Uh, it's a little bit slower. Leave them for a while and see what happens. It's been a little while now and the voltages are starting to stabilize as the cells dry out. We got here 1.76 volts, 1.71, 1.7. This is the first one I did, so it, it is drier. And this is the last one, and I, I could feel that it's wetter. This is the last one. And I took some hot glue, and I glued that these ends down so they're not flying around. And this other end is the one I can stick through the cap through these holes so I can connect these in series. I'm going to wait a little bit and let these dry a little bit more. I got too much there. I got to cut some off that one. This was about nine, almost nine feet of carbon fiber graphic rope, a strand of it. So I must have uh, wound some of these a little bit tighter than the other ones. Or it flat looks like it, this one is flattened out a little bit more. But it, it seems to be working all right. The next thing that I did with these cells is I poked them in the holes in the top of this lid, pushed these O-rings down, and put a little super glue around them to hold them. And I will set this in the jar. I'll put a little bit of this electrolyte water alum in here. Keep the moisture level up. I don't want the cells to touch the water. That looks like we're about a half inch above yet. The next thing I did with these is I connected them in series at the top with these screws I had in there. I put a little crimp on this one so I get a wire lead off of it. And they're in series, we'll test the voltage now. And a little lower, five volts is what we're getting. Should be able to get a little bit of power off of that to light a light, maybe. A little flashlight here, some clips on. So we had some light there. And the bigger part. It's just flashlights. When making crystal cells like these, I think it helps to leave them shorted together for a while. I think it helps build pathways as the crystals form. And then I'd let them rest for a period of time, and I might try this a few more times just to help build up the cell. This is the first time I use this carbon fiber graphite in a magnesium crystal cell. I got about 30 feet of this for about $13 off of Amazon. So this is an experiment. This does seem to put out a decent amount of voltage. But that's mostly what you get, because with crystal cells, they don't have a lot of power. If they're too wet or too dry, the voltage drops. But since I got this in a jar here, I think the humidity level should stay pretty even. So I hope it stays consistent. If it's a little too dry, then I can just shake this up and moisten up the cells. And this is an example of what happens when a crystal cell has too much moisture. There's too much water sitting around it. And it just corroded and ate up the magnesium. This is probably about a year old. So you have to watch that too. And maybe even in the future, I might have to drain some of the water out of that battery while I'm experimenting. Well, I think that'll about do it for now. Thanks for your time.